The Integration of African Americans into American Professional Sports by Diego Plata and Justo Quintanar. First, we will discuss the integration of black players in the NBA, the National Basketball Association. The NBA's two predecessors, the NBL, the National Basketball League, and the BAA, the Basketball Association of America, began integrating black players by 1942. By 1945, the NBL allowed the Dayton Rams, an all-black team, to join the league. When in November 1, 1946, these two basketball leagues joined to form the NBA, integration grew in importance. On May 25, 1950, Nats Whitwater Clifton became the first African American to sign with an NBA team. Earl Lloyd was the first black man to set foot in an NBA court and play in a game on October 31, 1950. Charles Chuck Cooper was drafted by the, by the Celtics sorry, on April 25, 1950, becoming the first black to be drafted into the NBA. However, even if black players were introduced to the NBA, they were not allowed to sleep in the same hotels as their white teammates. Fortunately, this policy had changed by the time more African American talents joined the league. Surprisingly, this integration of black players went unnoticed for most Americans, since the American audience preferred to follow baseball instead of basketball. Another factor that led to the integration of black players in the NBA were the Harlem Globetrotters' two victories over the NBA's Minneapolis Lakers. These victories made it starkly evident that black players could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the white ones. The destruction of the mentality that white players were better than blacks fostered the progression of integration. The Harlem Globetrotters game was characterized by high-flying jams, scintillating passes, and flashy ball handling. This type of playing style translated to the NBA with the entrance of more and more African Americans into the league. Furthermore, the NBA's, the NBA's game radically changed during the 50s and 60s, when a wave of great African American players joined the NBA. Players like Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, and Edwin Baylor changed the, both the way the position was played and how the game was played. During these prosperous times in basketball history, the NBA became more popular as Will Chamberlain, the league's first prolific scorer, and Bill Russell, the league's first high-flying blocker, became intense rivals. Thanks to the integration of African Americans, basketball gained in popularity in the U.S. and, it was, and it, the game and the way it was played, sorry, was changed forever. Now we'll mo move on to the integration of blacks in the NFL, the National Football League. The NFL was founded on August 20, 1920. During this inaugural season, African American Fritz Pollard, who had been an All American at Brown, at the start halfback for the Akron Pros. Sorry. Pollard leads the Pros to an undefeated season, then takes over as player coach for the 1920 season. Between 1920 and 1933, at least 13 African Americans appeared in the NFL rosters. However, this integration was opposed by many, like Washington Redskins owner George Preston Marshall. He persuaded fellow owners to impose an unofficial ban on black players for 13 years. Marshall fought integration in the, into the 1960s, saying he'll add a black player when the Harlem Globetrotters added a white player. The Redskins ended up being the last NFL team to integrate in 1962. However, opposition to the integration of African American players did not stop the inclusion of black players into NFL teams. In 1949, halfback George Taliaferro of India University is selected in the 13th, 13th round by the Chicago Bears, becoming the first African American selected in the NFL draft. However, halfback Wally Triplett of Penn State, selected in the 19th round by Detroit, become the first becomes sorry the first drafted African American player to appear in the game. Furthermore, in 1950, Mayor Mudley of the Cleveland Browns becomes the first African American to lead the league in a major esoterical category by rushing for 810 yards. More integrated African Americans achieved records during these times, especially in 1957, when Pittsburgh made Lowell Perry the first African American assistant coach in the NFL. During this year as well, Cleveland's Dream Brown leads the league in rushing with 942 yards and wins the NFL's first recognized MVP award. During 1961 and 1962, the emerging dominance of African American players became notorious. In the summer 1961, the Washington Redskins, still without ever having had an African American player on the roster, 
select Syracuse running back Ernie Davis as the NFL's first black number one pick in the draft. However, the most surprising fact is that in 1962, Green Bay's Jim Taylor led the league in rushing with 1,474 yards. However, he was the last Caucasian player to lead the league. From this moment on, black players became fully integrated in the NFL and they dominated the sport. To prove this, Phil Judge Head and, or Head Lansman, sorry, Burl Toller made his debut as the first African American to officiate in an NFL game. He worked through 1989, showing the NFL trusted black refs by 1965, when he began to work as a ref. Furthermore, on 1967, defensive back Emblem Tunnel, who played for the New York Giants and Green Bay over a 13-year career, became the first African American elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. African Americans were fully integrated, and their contribution to the sport was appreciated and admired. And from this point on, they would dominate the sport. Now we'll move on, finally, we'll move on to discussing the integration of African Americans in the ML MLB, sorry, the Major League Baseball. Many believe that baseball was later in integration, since they were the first to introduce black players in their league. Even if the US Supreme Court declared that they were separate but equal, including in sports, baseball broke that by integrating African American talent into the league. Furthermore, according to Negro League's Baseball Museum marketing director, Bob Kendrick, Major League Baseball was at the epicenter of that social political revolution. Baseball, thanks to Jackie Robinson, laid the groundwork for the progress that led to professional sports emerging as a force for equal rights in America. In addition to this, the integration of African American talents like Jackie Robinson or Sasha Page in the M M MLB sorry, had great repercussion repercussions on other sports. As we mentioned before, the NBA and NFL began integrating blacks as well, but they did so after they watched closely how would the American public react to the integration of black players in the baseball league. The positive, the positive integration of these players triggered the integration in the NBA and the NFL. Thanks to Robinson's successful season in 1947, when he got awarded with the Rookie of the Year award, many NBA teams decided to sign African American talents by 1950, as previously mentioned. Jackie Robinson became the living symbol of integration, since his success in the NBA fostered integration in all American professional sports, and everywhere. In these pictures you can see many African American talents like Dobie, Willard Brown, Don Newcomb, Sasha Page, and Minnie Minoso, but the most significant one was Jackie Robinson. His debut in 1947 with the LA Dodgers broke a barrier for all these players, since for the first time, a black player played in the top American sports league. Before him, no black player had played in the NBA, NFL, or NBA. However, Robinson did not only make it there, he also astonished American with his talents. Over 10 seasons, he played in 6 World Series and contributed to the Dodgers 1955 World Championship. He was selected for 6 consecutive All-Star Games from 1949 to 1954. Furthermore, he won the National League Most Valuable Player Award in 1949, the first black player to be honored like that. Robinson was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. Furthermore, Robinson, Jackie Robinson had become a legend and an example to all Americans, black and white. In 1997, his efforts were honored when the Major League Baseball retired his uniform number 42 across all Major League teams. Okay, so now we're gonna watch a video of Jackie Robinson and his skills playing baseball. Jackie Robinson hit that ball. Did he hit it? Yes, and that ain't all. He's no home. Yes, yes, Jackie's real gone. 